I want to tell the story for all the lovely people that drove my young friends here. Because I know they love you and they drove me to this wonderful museum. I want to share this story for all those drivers and the young children to listen to this story. Around 1976, I was living in Providence, Rhode Island. I was living in an apartment across the street from a building where my brother was working. And every now and then we'd go out for lunch together. One day we went out for lunch, it was in August. It was a hot August day and I was driving. We had lunch, we were driving back to where I lived and where he worked. And as I was driving up the street, riding down the street on a bicycle that was way, way too small for him, was this guy who was huge. He was huge. He didn't have a shirt on. All he had on was muscles. He had muscles on top of muscles. He had muscles where most of us don't even have places. <laughs> he, was, he, he was so big, he'd make King Kong apologize. That's how big he was. He's riding down the street. I said to my brother, Ali, look at the size of this guy. And as he rode by us, he blocked out the sun. We were in the shade. I said, wow. <laughs> I continued driving until we came to a parking lot, the community parking lot. I pulled into that parking lot and I looked, and right there in the middle of the parking lot was a car. And its four doors were open, and there were people sitting in the car. And the people in the car, they just had their lunch. And I could tell they just had their lunch because everything they didn't eat was on the ground outside the car. There were potato chip bags, soda cans, McDonald's boxes, Dunkin' Donut boxes, banana peels, all this trash. I said, no way, no way. They're going to clean this mess up. I live here. They don't live here. They're going to clean this mess up. So I parked the car. My brother and I, we get out of the car. We start walking across the parking lot, feeling like a couple of gladiators. When all of a sudden I stop, because I noticed from the corner of my eye, I notice that fellow with all the muscles, he rides that bike back into the parking lot, gets off the bike, gives it to a little boy whose bike it was, and that fellow with all the muscles walks across the parking lot over to that car, and he sits down in the driver's seat. It's his car. Those are his friends. It's their trash. Right away I stopped. I had to reevaluate the situation. I said to my brother, I said, hey, Ali, you know, uh, <laughs> it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't look that bad. I said, I can always clean it up myself, no problem. Well, let's go. And I thought my brother, I greeted me as we walked across the street. We stood on the curb on the other side of the street. We stood there, we watched, and we listened as all the doors of that car closed at once. Boom! And that fellow with all the muscles, he put one hand on the steering wheel, dropped his other arm out the window of the car. His arm was so long, it touched the ground. He kicks out of the car with a little nudge. His knuckles are dragging on the ground. Sparks coming from his jewelry. He pulled out of the parking lot, out into the street. He starts to drive by us. I'm standing there like this. When all of a sudden I hear my brother's voice. My brother says, Excuse me! Excuse me! My heart goes, Bing! Excuse me! The fellow drives in the car, looks at us, reaches back, Pinches the rear tire of the car. <laughs> My brother says, excuse me, can we have all that stuff over there? You know, the banana peels, the soda cans, the McDonald's boxes, Dunkin' Donuts boxes. Can we have all that stuff? The guy looks at us, looks at all that trash, looks back at us, reaches over and he grabs the shift. I'm praying that he's going to put it in reverse and not park. He puts it in reverse 
You listen to the rich high with the car. The car rolls back down the street. He turns it into that parking lot. Right into the center of all that trash. He pinches the rear tire. He gets out of the car. He orders his friends out of the car. He points and they pick. He points and they pick. He points and they pick. They're as afraid of him as I am. They pick up all their trash, plus trash that had been there for six weeks. They put it in a big dumpster. They get back into the car. The doors all close. He puts one hand on the steering wheel, drops his other arm out the window of the car. His arm is so long, it touches the ground. He kicks out the car once again with a little nudge. His knuckles are dragging on the ground, sparks coming from his jewelry. He pulls out of the parking lot, out into the street. He starts to drive by us. I'm standing there like this. He looks at us and he goes... And he drives down the street. I go. My brother nudges me and says, Len, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Mm. Tap. 